One of the greatest things about video games is that they're able to suspend disbelief and combine different eras, years, genres, science fiction, past, present, future, fantasy, and roll all this into one video game that somehow makes sense. And that's Fire Shark. As you fly your 1917 World War I era biplane into combat against an army that has hundreds and thousands of various tanks, airplanes, jets, robot tank things, gun turrets, and all kinds of other weapons that don't belong in any one particular time period or in reality whatsoever. This is a vertical shooting game on the Sega Genesis. And it's an all-around solid game, but not one of the best games on the Genesis, but still worth playing, especially if you like the vertical shooting game genre. There's nothing here that we haven't seen before. You are that lone fighter against seemingly impossible odds on a daring mission that, under normal circumstances, would be complete suicide. I don't have the instruction manual for the game, so I'm not entirely sure what the plot is, but it doesn't really matter. Your job is to blow up everything on screen that moves, including these things, which make another appearance in Raiden 3. That makes you wonder, what companies actually manufacture the end bosses they use in these video games, in the vertical shooting games? Do the bad guys contract out to uh, Ford or Toyota to design their gigantic tank things with spinning gun turrets? You can almost imagine that the army of bad guys and their, and their head officers sit around the, the table with the catalog. They're flipping through the glossy pages like they'd hand you out at the car dealer and they can select various models and, and color and trim. So you figure you just blew up their ridiculous spinning gun turret tank thing they probably had only paid off about two years of that by the time you exploded it on a five-year payment plan. So you've completely screwed the enemy out of a couple hundred thousand dollars. That they're going to end up in legal battles against their insurance company for the next decade to try to reclaim. So even if your plane gets shot down in Fire Shark and you go down in flames, you can sleep well at night knowing that you've caused the enemy accounting department a major headache. The game starts you off in the biplane, you're moving very slowly, and the enemies come at you quickly. It's a challenging game. The first and primary weapon you start with is that standard shotgun blast. You collect power-ups. On the right side of the screen you'll see it says P and there's three bars. When you pick up three power-ups, your weapon increases in power. The enemy zeppelins drop various power-ups, weapons, bombs, one-ups. The gun that you want to get is the red one that you can then power up and have it reach all over the screen and destroy enemies everywhere. When you shoot the hot air balloon things, they unleash those power-ups which float around the screen like giant chiclets. Uh, the gum. And you, you want to avoid them all except the red one. So half the challenge in this game is dodging the blue and especially the green chiclets. When you power up the blue one, which is the standard shot, it turns into an enormous shotgun. It's not so bad. It takes forever for those chiclets to get off the screen, too. So you're, you're dodging them for a while until, until you finally end up picking one up by accident. Fire Shark has a copyright of 1990 for the Sega Genesis. So it's on the earlier side of the Genesis games. I don't think it's nearly as exciting or polished as a game like Musha which came out about the same time on the Genesis. I'm not entirely sure if this came from an arcade game first. It sort of feels like it. The music and the graphics generally are not pushing the Genesis to the limit. However, the gameplay is solid. The thing that bothers me the most about Fire Shark is that when you start the game, your plane moves very slowly. And as you progress, you pick up speed increasing power-ups that increase the speed of your plane. And in this kind of video game, speed is of the utmost importance because you need to dodge the huge array of bullets and stuff flying, flying at your airplane trying to kill you. However, when you die, you lose your speed. 
and then you lose the edge in this game, and you've really got to be good to get out of that hole. I shot my way through the entire review of this game on one life for the most part. I was doing pretty well because I had my weapons all powered up and was having a good time. The game is still challenging, and even on the easy setting, the game will definitely uh, test your skill level on a shooting game because there's a lot of stuff moving on screen, and if, you're, if your plane takes one hit, you're destroyed. So it's not like Sylphide, which we recently reviewed, where you can take several hits before you blow up. Your biplane is very fragile. Even harsh language will damage it. As a personal preference, I prefer games where your ship is moving quickly to begin with. It doesn't mess around with speed increasing power-ups. But that's not Fire Shark. In Fire Shark, when you die, you slow down to a crawl. And then you're in the shit. Although I enjoyed Fire Shark, I wouldn't put it in the must-have category of Sega Genesis games. But it is a fun game, very challenging, and if you like this genre, it'll only cost you a few bucks to pick up. And as I said, the gameplay is solid. I think the backgrounds get a little boring after a while. Well, let's talk about the title for a moment. Fire Shark. It's a very macho sounding title. Fire. Shark. How many video games have used one of those words? When I produce my vertical shooting game on the Sega Genesis or Atari 2600, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to call it Wind squid. Wind is an element like fire, and squids share the seas with sharks. And you can almost see the packaging. Wind squid, eight arms and two tentacles of airborne destruction. <laughs> <laughs> 